Hello and welcome to another game from uh, the round of eight of the ESL Power Cup 2. This is on a map which I do not know the name for, unfortunately. And coming into this game here, I have just realized that I don't know this name for the map. And I'm incredibly embarrassed to sit here looking at this map. So, <laughs> what you may know about me or you may not is that I am almost entirely a 1v1 player. So, uh, I have very little experience on this map. I have played on it before. Uh, I have never watched a game on it, so I don't have too much uh, specific map knowledge. Um, so yeah, we're going to get to see uh, the ESL map pool has been uh, being updated. Uh, your boy Sinestro has been putting in some work to try and make it more varied and interesting, which is a very good thing. So we see the Orc building going down here for the first part, but let's meet our players after I'm done rambling. We have here in the bottom left, your boy Vindicare X. Great to see Eldar actually having some representation in these tournaments once again. Seeing an interesting choice with the uh, nine point Wraith Knight, uh, Ronin and Maka coming in here. There's an interesting uh, combination, and on the other side of the field, you have, with some very typical hero choices, Yogi Mains. He has the early game Storm Boys, the huge Nukin Zap Noggin, and the great defensive Warbus Gorguts, who I always talk about how great his swing is in a meta like this, where there is so much fire coming in. A good grenade there coming from, uh, from Vindicare X, who needs to make sure uh, that he can not get too many uh, Dire Avengers caught out. They are not the strongest. They're going to run into the uh, defensive line of this turret. It's interesting how uh, open this map is uh, for a 1v1. There are lots of ways, you know, you can even come in on these turrets entirely skipping the uh, uh, the shield generators, which is something that on most 1v1 maps is entirely not possible as we see some more fighting going on on the other side. Some uh, Dire Avengers outclassing these shooters a little bit as they are 2 to 1. But they need to be careful. They can put in a bit of damage on this side, but they don't want to do too much. They're going to get this power generator down, actually, which is a, ni a really nice early game blow uh, to the economy of the, the Orc player. Nice multi-pronged action going on here, although Yogi Mains is going to lose this uh, boy. Actually, he might manage to do his shout before they get around to killing him, so he's actually going to get the whole shield there. But he's still going to go down. He's still going to go down. So some nice early damage from Vindicare, getting an Orc squad and a, uh, a power generator down, only taking requisition, which isn't exactly sparse uh, in this game right now. But you know, still, still, still getting things done. These Orcs going to come down here and see a listening post. It's a bit too much for such a small, small army to take on. And Vindicare still keeping up the pressure on both sides with these Dire Avengers doing what Eldar are supposed to do in this game, some hit and run stuff, just never letting the orcs get a full on engagement and just dealing some damage whenever they can. You can see the shields going down a bit and it's fine because shields, they, they, they don't cost anything to replenish. So he's just going to move away and try and get in another good grenade there to try and keep his uh, Dire Avengers a bit live. They've lost a the model in this squad, unfortunately. And so no points uh, are really being strongly held here uh, by the Eldar um, on the sides. This point keeps going and some of these points are under a bit of threat here. But this uh, point by the side is also being quite harassed by the Eldar, although there is now Stormboys coming down in the back line of these Dire Avengers. A good split there to make them take less damage, but these two are together and are going to get jumped on uh, by these uh, Stormboys. Not doing too much, they're only getting one stun on one squad, but this Dire Avenger squad is definitely going to go down, and this Orc squad is going to overrun this now. It looks like Vindicare actually wants to stand and defend this, uh, which might not be the best idea, but he is by the listening post. He does have the defense of that uh, here to help him out, and so the boys are going to have to retreat. He only has uh, boys and a shooter squad here, so it's not too strong of an army. Oh, there was this another group of boys uh, shooters here, but they were not ready. So the Orcs have pushed down on this side, but once again, Eldar are trying to keep active on this side, even though they don't have any forces there right yet. Doing some more damage to this uh, boy's hut. Oh, and actually entirely dodged that suicide boy. That's a really bad sign for these uh, for these storm boys.
Although I guess they don't cost requisition or anything to uh, replenish, so it's not as bad as uh, losing some other forces. So this webway gate is suddenly going to make the harassment around here a lot more uh, effective. However, the other side, oh, the other side has its own webway gate as well. Nice. So keeping movement speed covered on this is just improving what he was doing before. We have Maka here now as well to put on some pressure. Maka really gives some firepower to this force which he didn't have before, as long as she can hit off a uh, really good explosion uh, with her staff, uh, which it doesn't look like she did because she's already gotten both on cooldown and. Uh, I don't see too much damage having gone down here. You can see a couple of old bodies around here, though. I, I do. Uh, one of the things I have started to really like about this game is the, the way the battlefields really do get scattered with the forces. There's another power generator going down to this side. But, you know, in this game, I sometimes struggle to really uh, identify how effective things are being because although, you know, people are losing stuff on both sides. Uh, and the game is kind of about, you know, slowly, slowly chipping away at your enemy so that you can get an insurmountable lead. The the swings that can be caused by the comeback mechanics in this game can be so large that sometimes I look at little harassments like this and I think, is it actually that important? Now, your old player has, seems to have plenty of money to keep making boys. Uh, has, as you can see from the bottom, quite a good good little amount of boys right now going up against these three dire avengers uh, on the elder side we still do not see movement to the second webway we do see a soul shrine going down which i uh, actually managed to call the right name rather than a spirit stone but nothing really being specifically made here by the eldar and uh in this sort of meta you see ver eldar very little i do have not played a lot of eldar in this meta i do not know what is specifically considered incredibly good now i would expect to see a lot of dark reapers but with those sort of strategies i normally expect to have seen dark reapers coming out before now honestly and you, 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 we're not really seeing that here you know there's going to be a really good plasma grenade there but it's just going to slow down the death of this uh, warrior structure banshees are getting out and getting onto the back line but this is really outnumbered here, even though the, the, the Eldar are moving on now. Now, the, the Warrior Portal actually survived there, which I am surprised about. But Maka is very powerful Nuka, so I guess he, he really doesn't want to have Banshees slowing him down into a, a big uh, a big Maka nuke. But now the uh, the Eldar side are on... The Eldar are on this side a lot. Smashing the power generator or what? I don't even know. So the Eldar have suddenly moved over to this side and uh, it's an interesting move how there's, there's such a setup here that's been being harassed for the whole game. You can see these three war towers back here but nothing on this side really so now that they have moved around to this side they do have quite an opening to get some damage done here to take a load of points to make sure there's no power generators on the side but the orcs could come around and do the same to the other side which it looks like they are going to gonna do now that there is less defense on this side. Dire Avenger squad coming down here to make some moves and the rest of the Elder army is reacting quite quickly and with the webway gates they are going to be able to move very fast to get in here so the orcs don't have a lot of time before uh, they are confronted. Having one Dire Avenger squad in here will not work at all because the boys will just walk in there and just not care at all. Um, these shooter boys are being a bit wasted there, but the uh, Dire Avengers do come out now and are going to uh, get taken a lot of damage as Maka is still taking a while to uh, arrive, but the Orcs haven't actually done uh, enough damage to take down this listening post yet, and the Elder Army has arrived, so now they're all stuck together, and this could be very dangerous if they get hit by a big explosion. It wasn't too bad. The splits were pretty nice from Yogi Mains. That's a, a decent stick bomb going to go down there into some of the Eldar. Really good stasis coming out from uh, Maka, however, but she's going to get knocked out of it by a very good stick bomb. The Banshees are absolutely slicing through these Orcs, so they've got a really good force in there, and that was a huge plasma grenade as these groups are all in one, but there are now some knobs coming in on the backside. They can get a really strong taunt off here and keep a lot of the Dire Avengers down in the back, so a lot of the damage of the Eldar force is now going down. Maka and the Banshees are still having a good go at it, and a lot of these Orcs you can see, even though there's quite a crowd of them, they're lots of very low squads, so they all could get popped out quite easily here as the boys are trying to get away from, from this fight and the knobs are just left over. Ronan now coming out as well. It's going to get a good hit there through some of the Orcs. Another taunt from the uh, knobs is going to keep these people fighting, but I mean... That's not really that bad when you have 
Banshees and Mac are there. They're not exactly the sort of people who really don't want to be fighting too much. Have a few Dire Avengers hidden over here. I was wondering what that blob was. Banshee's going to just get out on the lowest amount of health and actually is Weird Boy. Weird Boy's not going to quite be enough to take it out. Ooh, those Banshees. Only just getting out. Now, that's going to be a big Fist of Gork if it hits both these heroes, but it doesn't look like it will. It was a bit too obvious. Now, I think the Banshees actually went down there because they were just still standing in that brush. But now we actually see Shadow Specs coming out, which is very, very interesting because these are something that I do not see in a lot of games. Essentially, from my experience with them and from my experience of seeing them in games, they are essentially just siege weapons. You know, you're going to sit them here and right now they're going to do absolute carnage to the buildings of the Orcs if you can not have your army get annihilated, you know? So a while's going off to try and uh, get these boys all hyped up so they can force off this force and it's not a very strong army coming out from the Eldar so it shouldn't be too hard to get down. The boys hut is actually going to go down now which is really unfortunate and they're now sprinting away with fleet of foot. But we now have two groups of spectres which is a really interesting choice because they're just not going to do much to these army. Now they can just keep hovering away and they have quite a long range shot so as you can see they're just sort of keeping on these uh, boys but it's not going to be doing a lot of damage to them. Although, Maka is, is putting in her work as well. And maybe it's literally just the thought that the Orcs cannot get to the Shadow Spectres. Should the Shadow Spectres, even though they have that armor-piercing damage, which isn't going to do super well, they can get it on there. Good cancel on the stasis to get out of the Fist of Gork there. These knobs getting entirely destroyed. Holy moly. The charge up, just like with last cannons, do end up getting quite a good shot and that was an attempt to taunt them out of it but Shadow Spectres don't have a melee attack so they just don't care they just keep shooting this is great another war going down but actually really no one to war on and now the Shadow Spectres are just going to absolutely go to town on these buildings this might have just absolutely turned the game right here because they just are no orcs to defend this and the Shadow Spectres like I said they're siege weapons they're just absolutely going to rip through these buildings you can see how fast that starts going down as soon as he realizes there are no orcs here, he's just going to push. And he's going to do so much damage. He can take down all of this while he could probably even take down that shield generator. We just have the two heroes from the orcs and one squad of boys that are actually out. Ronan and some uh, Dire Avengers pushing into the back here. Going to just be getting some damage down on the back line. Makara staying at the front, taking these objectives. And now the Shadow Spectres, realizing that there's nothing to stop them, are just going to walk in and do some damage. Sitting on this side uh, so they can get up to this, uh, this shield generator layer, perhaps. And it does look like that's where they're going. They're just going to say the, the Orc defenses, if it does come, will be on the other side of the map. So we're just going to hit here, although Weird Boy has come in to try and do some damage, but nothing really being done. And now they're just skimming away, putting a bit of hurt on your boy and that's just gonna be the end he didn't think he could get enough to uh, withhold that and he was seeing how quickly a lot of his buildings were going down and he's gonna throw in the towel well played by uh, Vindicare a very interesting strategy we'll see if in the next game he chooses to use those shadow spectres again